Welcome to your week in gaming with me, GD, the place for the hottest news, UK charts and new releases of the week. In this week's news, Microsoft does a 180, Sony is breaking PS3s and first party games get priced for the next generation. First in the news this week, Xbox will not require regular online checks or place restrictions on game lending as a result of feedback from the Xbox community Microsoft announced. The announcement is a complete reversal of the company's previously announced DRM policy for games on the Xbox One. Xbox executive Don Matrick wrote in a blog post, after a one-time system setup with a new Xbox One, you can play any disc-based game without ever connecting online again. There is no 24 hours connection requirement and you can take your Xbox One anywhere you want and play your games, just like an Xbox 360. Matrick added that Xbox One would be region free, any Xbox One disc should function in any Xbox One console. Additionally, Matrick wrote, players will be able to trade in, lend, resell, gift and rent disc-based games just like you do today. There will be no limitations to using and sharing games, it will work just as it does today on the Xbox 360. This will come at a small cost, despite previous announcements, Xbox One will require that the disc remains in the tray in order to play games. The player will be unable to share downloaded games. In other words, it will work exactly like the Xbox 360, for better and for worse. Before last week's announcements, things looked bad for Microsoft. Public consumer polls put the PlayStation 4 ahead of the Xbox One by a wide margin. The company had also planned a complicated license transfer scheme that would allow Xbox One users to trade in games at approved retailers, but which would prevent them from simply allowing a friend to borrow the game and would saw the end of game rentals for the Xbox One. Though this might bring a few more pre-orders for the Xbox One, does it feel more now that Microsoft are playing catch-up with Sony? Next in the news this week, Sony has forced to pull the PS3 system update after a widespread report that it was causing machines to crash. The 4.45 system update was supposed to include improvements to the system's stability, as well as a new trophy notification options. But according to many posters on the official PS3 forum, as well as commenters on video games websites, the actual result was to lock users out of their systems. Wow, that update just bricked my PS3 and my warranty is expired, said one. Great! Some reported that their systems were either unable to boot up after installing the update, or said their console crashed as soon as it completed loading the welcome screen. Worse still, the update was mandatory, meaning that many users had no choice but to install it if they wanted to use the full functionality of the machine. After just a few hours, Sony took the update offline as issued a statement explaining that the issue had affected only a small number of PS3 systems. It said, We are aware of reports that the recent PS3 system software update, version 4.45, has caused the XMB to not display on a small number of PS3 systems. We have temporarily taken 4.45 offline and we are investigating the cause of the problem. We will announce when the system update is available for download as soon as possible. We apologise for the inconvenience. In a pair of posts on the official PlayStation Europe Twitter account, Sony said a fix will be coming on June the 27th. But until then those affected users have a weekend, and then some, without the use of their console. The first tweet read, Hi guys, we have identified the issue related to the PS3 software update. 4.45 that impacted a small number of PS3 systems earlier this week. That was followed by a new system software update is planned to be released on June the 27th that resolves the issue. The issue brings to a close a honeymoon period of unwaveringly positive press since the E3 Expo when Sony took a giant leap ahead in the next gen console battle with the PS4 keynote. However, although beating the Xbox One must be a giant priority for this company, it would be advised not to forget all about the loyal PS3 users. It hopes it will continue to support the existing console and upgrade to the PS4. 
Finally in this week's news, Sony's first party PlayStation 4 games will not have a price increase. With Microsoft recently confirming that the Xbox One games will carry the same recommended retail price as current Xbox 360 games also. Sony President Yoshida was more cagey on the matter saying that he knew the price point for Sony's PS4 games but wasn't yet willing to share it. A Sony representative has however told Shaq News that the firm's first party launch and launch window offerings will cost the usual amount. We have announced the pricing for our first party lineup of PS4 launch and launch window games. All four titles, Killzone Shadowfall, Drive Club, Knack and Infamous Second Son are all $59.99, that's in dollars, the rep has confirmed. While this doesn't confirm pricing for third party software or rule out general software prices in the long run, it certainly further indicates that retail game prices will remain the same in the transition to new consoles. Activision, Ubisoft and EA spokespeople have all declined to comment on next-gen game pricing in regards to recent reports, but EA COO Peter Moore recently told Analyst that it doesn't expect software prices to increase next-gen, noting, you see a $60 price for next-gen games whereas we believe, with digital downloads, we can get 70, 80, 90 from the consumer, but it's a $60 price point. And those who spend their lives trying to rebuild the past. We don't have to do this. You know that, right? After all we've been through, everything that I've done. And if you want to know if your game has made the top 20 for this week, either go to yourgame.com or click on the link in the details below. Now it's time for the new releases, starting with Borderlands 2 DLC, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep on Xbox 360, PC and PS3 coming out the 25th of June. Next we have Magic Duel of the Planeswalkers 2014 on Xbox 360 coming out 26th of June. Next we have The Sims 3 Island Paradise on PC and Mac coming out the 28th of June. Also we have Game & Mario on the Wii U coming out the 28th of June. And finally we have Deadpool coming out on Xbox 360 and PS3 on the 28th of June. Well, that's it for your week in gaming for the week ending 22nd of June 2013. For more daily news, go to yourgame.com or follow us on Twitter or Facebook on the links in the details below. Also, if you like the show, click on the subscribe button and the like button below. And remember to tune in next week for more of the highest news, UK charts and new releases for the week right here on Your Week in Gaming.